One of the biggest criticisms I get to when it comes to taking supplements is that why don't you just eat real food? Why don't you just get those supplements from the food? Now, that is, of course, a valid point. The goal of supplementation is usually to supplement, to addition to your already existing diet. So in this video, I'm going to give you the supplements that you could easily get from real food and you don't necessarily need to supplement them. But do you want to slow down aging and live longer? If yes, then I'm looking for more people who want to reverse their biological clock. If you're interested, then email me the word health to info at seamland.com and I'll send you the details. So the first supplement on the list is gonna be spermidine. Spermidine is a polyamine that has been found to have some anti-aging and longevity benefits, such as improvements in autophagy function, reduction in inflammation, and just better overall metabolic health. There have also been multiple human studies showing how dietary spermidine intake is associated with reduced all-cause mortality and reduced cardiovascular disease. So spermidine is something that you you would probably want to have in your diet in some shape or form. Based on the current evidence, you want to get at least 11 milligrams of spermidine into your diet. And spermidine is a compound that you can get from different kinds of healthy foods. Here's a list of the highest food sources of spermidine. Wheat germ, 24 milligrams per 100 grams. Soybeans, 20 milligrams per 100 grams. Cheddar cheese, 19 milligrams per 100 grams. Mushrooms, 9 milligrams per 100 grams. Ground beef, 7 milligrams per 100 grams. And green peas, 6.5 milligrams per 100 grams. So even if you eat only like 200 milligrams of these kinds of specific foods, then you will easily cover your 11 milligrams of spermidine requirement per day. We don't have any of those kind of studies on the supplemental form of spermidine, which is why you want to emphasize mostly on the dietary spermidine, at least based on the current evidence. Maybe in the future we will have an actual clinical trials on the supplemental spermidine spermidine but right now you don't necessarily need to spend money on the spermidine supplement you just want to make sure that you eat these foods that I just mentioned and get at least 11 milligrams of spermidine per day the second supplement on the list is creatine now i do think that supplementing creatine is probably still very effective for athletes and the elderly population if they want to improve their muscle strength and muscle power you do get creatine from different kinds of foods but to get the optimal three to five gram dose per day for maximum athletic performance then uh, you do might need to supplement because the food quantities aren't really that high. Here are the highest sources of creatine. Number one is actually herring. You get around 900 milligrams of creatine from 100 grams of herring. Pork, beef and salmon give around 500 milligrams of creatine per 100 grams. Chicken and other types of fish give around 300 to 400 milligrams per 100 grams. So you can do the math. If you're getting around 400 grams of herring per day, which is, I don't know, it's, it's not like impossible to eat, but it's uh, still relatively food that most people aren't eating in large quantities. Then you will be able to get like three to four grams of creatine, which is a good amount. When it comes to beef and other forms of red meat, then yeah, you need to up to like one kilo gram of uh, red meat to get the five gram dose of uh, creatine. Now, if you're getting half of that, then that's fine. Like 2.5 grams of creatine from 500 grams of uh, beef is still a very good amount. But, uh, you know, chances are some people might need more to maximize their physical performance. But if you are just eating more foods that have creatine, then you might notice a boost in your performance already. The third supplement is going to be glycine, which is a good amino acid for helping with collagen synthesis, creatine synthesis, and glutathione synthesis. Now, your body already makes three grams of glycine itself every day. Those three grams will be most likely used for synthesizing glutathione, creatine, and heme, which requires three grams of glycine per day. However, there's an additional demand of 12 grams of glycine for collagen turnover in the skin. So if you are interested in maintaining better skin health and reducing wrinkles, then yeah, you do want to make sure you get at least 12 grams of glycine per day from a combination of uh, dietary sources and supplemental sources. If you are taking a collagen supplement, then 30% of that is glycine. So for example, you take 10 grams of collagen peptides, you're going to get 3 grams of glycine from that. Gelatin powder is another high source of collagenous proteins as well as glycine, but gelatin actually has a little bit less glycine than collagen peptides. It's not 30%, it's 20%. So 20% of uh, gelatin powder is glycine. You Usually one ounce of uh, gelatin powder, which is used to make the desserts, will give you then around five grams of uh, glycine. Bone broth also contains different kinds of collagenous amino acids as well as glycine, 
But based on the studies, then bone broth is unlikely to provide enough of the collagenous precursors and glycine to support collagen turnover and to uh, give the same results as we have seen in the studies. So bone broth is a good addition if you like to have it, but you shouldn't rely on getting your glycine or the other collagenous uh, amino acids from just bone broth. Here are some other glycine rich foods. Pork skin snacks have around 11.9 grams of glycine per 100 grams. White fish 4.3 grams. Soy protein powder has 3.6 grams. Turkey meat and cord have 3 grams and lean beef has 2.2 grams per 100 grams of meat. So unless you are eating literally pork rind snacks every day then chances are you're not getting the 12 gram of glycine intake that uh, would be the best. So I think that like adding a 3 gram glycine is the kind of minimum you want to aim for even if you getting a lot of glycine from your foods you can use a 3 grams of glycine before bed to help with sleep it's going to lower your body temperature and help with GABA production which is beneficial for sleep. The next supplement on the list is going to be taurine because we just had a 2023 study showing taurine supplementation extended lifespan of mice by 10 to 12 percent. The human equivalent dose for achieving that effect was 6 grams but based on some other studies then 3 grams of taurine already gave some health benefits. It's just that the 10 to 12 percent life extension in the mice required the 6 grams of taurine. Taurine is something that you could get from whole foods as well and you don't necessarily need to supplement it. The highest foods sources of taurine are tuna giving you 900 milligrams per 100 grams and seaweeds giving you 1300 milligrams per 100 grams. Beef, chicken and other meat sources give only around 300 milligrams of taurine per 100 grams. If you're a person who eats a lot of seafood like the Japanese or Koreans then you will probably get uh, the 3 to 6 grams of taurine from the seafood that you eat especially if you're eating a lot of uh, seaweeds like nori. But if you're mostly eating red meat then uh, you need to eat at least least one kilogram of red meat to reach the three grams of taurine threshold and for the optimal results you want to aim for the six grams of taurine per day and for that you would need to eat two kilograms of red meat per day which uh, most people aren't really doing. So taurine is something that yeah you can use as a supplement in smaller doses but if you're getting a lot of uh, dietary taurine already from nori and tuna and a little bit of red meat for example then you don't need to like supplement a lot of it. The last supplement on the list is a bonus. It's called TMG or trimethylglycine, also known as betaine. Methylation is super important for longevity and all of the DNA methylation clocks that measure your biological age are based on the methylation patterns. If you're not getting enough TMG or the other methyl donors, then you have poor methylation and because of that, you would also see accelerated biological aging. Usually the supplemental doses for TMG are around 500 to 1000 milligrams per day. If you're a poor methylator, you have bad methylation methylation genes, then chances are you might need up to 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams per day. Here are the dietary sources of TMG. Wheat bran has around 1,300 milligrams of TMG per 100 grams. Wheat germ has 1,200 milligrams per 100 grams. Spinach, 600 to 650. Quinoa, 390 milligrams. Beets, around 300 milligrams. And shrimp, 200 milligrams per 100 grams. If you have good methylation genes, you don't have the MTHFR mutations, then you probably don't need to supplement TMG as long as you're eating some of these foods that I just listed. If you're having like one beetroot for example then you're covering almost half of your daily TMG requirement or the rec recommended amount of TMG and then you add a little bit of other foods that I mentioned and you will already get the 500 milligram requirement at minimum and even up to 1000 milligram. If you take a little bit of wheat germ which is also a good source of spermidine which I do like I take of wheat germ with my food that already gives me quite a lot of a spermidine as well and it also boosts my TMG intake quite a lot. But if you are a bad methylator then chances are you would benefit from supplementing TMG as well because you're not going to get enough of the TMG. But other than that thanks for watching this video make sure to click a like subscribe notification bell as well my name is Seem. Stay optimized stay empowered.